story that actually took place on 9-11 and right after 9-11 and during the process of editing the book, that sto story disappeared and seemed too literal. A lot, of, a lot of what I ended up doing in the book, aside from the, the lighter pieces, the, the heavier pieces are, are more archetypal and mythological about how we always live in a kind of existential terror, you know, and probably we live in that state of terror uh, since uh, the uh, probable death of God. You know, I mean, we no longer have someone we can look up to and say, wow, we're safe. So there is that kind of existential terror. And it's most, most literalized, I think, in childhood. So I thought I'd, I'd read a poem and then two pages. The poem is, is by the last week's uh, winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature, Tomas Charms Troma. Uh, and this is a, a, tra a translation by our own Minnesota's own Robert Dahl. At times, my life suddenly opens its eyes in the dark. A feeling of masses of people pushing blindly through the streets, excitedly, towards some miracle, while I remain here and no one sees me. It's like the child who falls asleep in terror, listening to the heavy thumps of his heart. For a long, long time, until morning puts his light in the locks, and the doors of darkness open. So when we think about terror, there's light at the end of the tunnel if it's existential terror. Uh, when we talk about political and national terror, um, there's moments of peace, but that's never going to go away because people have reasons to keep it from going away, whatever those reasons happen to be. This is from a, a story called Secret Cave. They blindfolded Nick and led him barefoot into the crackle of night. They brought him to a place where he could feel grass under his feet and gave him something to drink that tasted like a laxative. The beverage made him woozy. He fell into a swoon. When he woke, he could hear drum beats and a whip cracked like gunshots. They turned him in circles. Drums beat out a pulse. Someone stood close and repeated an incantation that he could not understand. His sinuses filled with the scent of hibiscus and jasmine and sandalwood. They uncovered his eyes. Three black dogs on chains howled and strained against what held them. Men in headbands and sarongs with dark aviator glasses rode broomsticks made into hobby horses that had black leather hoods. The men pulsated in a nerve dance to the drums. One ate a tube of glass. One tossed a coconut high in the air and stood under it. It came down and broke into pieces on his skull. Another charged into the crowd that surrounded the field. The corral of human bodies the sound of vendors hawking t-shirts and cold drinks, the desperate howls of the dog, worked on Nick like a drug in the flicker of lantern light. Children turned toward him in masks. One had the snout of a pig, another demon eyes and distended features. They stared from a world beyond his camp. A man in black cracked his whip on the horseman's back until the rider reared up in trance on his leather and wood hobby horse and galloped in a circular frenzy. One fell as though struck by a stroke. His limbs quivered in seizure until they held him down, and a man picked up the mask of a monkey and put it on and sprinkled the seized man with liquid and spit and held a stick of burning incense to the man's nostrils, whereupon the seizure ended, and the man rose to receive his hobby horse and canter again to the sound of drums. The one in the pig mask came to Nick and twirled him like a top until he was too dizzy to stand. They blindfolded him and he felt himself weaving among hobby horse dancers. The bystanders chanted and the drums beat. One dancer bopped Nick on the forehead with something furry and hard, the coconut. He tried to take a swing, but his hands were bound to his sides and he stumbled. They brought him to his feet and he felt soil that was cool and freshly dug. They grabbed him by the ankles and gripped him under the shoulders and laid him down and tied him to a plank of wood as if they might rotate him on a spit. As a child, he had once gone underground into a hole, hiding in the secret cave. He had felt safe, but not alone, as if creatures made of soil had him under observation. He found that safe moment and did his best to keep it in mind, as he felt himself lowered into the ground. The light through his blindfold was muffled, and so were the drum beats and the noise of the bystanders. The light disappeared though he could still hear dull thuds. He lost all sense of time, but he understood that he had been buried alive. He dreamed about an irrigated field that glistened green in glassy sunlight. 
children played some sort of bell and ball game. Hit the ball, ring the bell, run. They played in blouses and knickers, breeches tightened with elastic just below their knees. They rode hobby horses and were grot wore grotesque painted masks of pigs and monkeys and demons with distended features. He gave himself up to death. Time lost all meaning. Voices spoke to him in a language that he could no longer piece together. Despite the heat, he imagined ice melting into water. The drum beats grew loud. He could hear the world again. They took him from the earth into the night and untied his blindfold. 